Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. I'm just going to take down a few more trees so that we've got plenty on the ground and then we can go and load up again, take them off to the sawmill and hopefully reach our target of $450,000. So if we've reached that target, the magical, magical number, we can take a little walk off the shop and we can go and buy ourselves a brand new tree harvester. Something I'm very, very much looking forward to. I think it's going to be absolutely spectacular and wonderful and amazing and, and just, just quite frankly glorious. And it's, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm very, very much looking forward to doing this. Let's get that one there. And there we have it. It has been a long time coming. It's been a very, very long time coming. Yes, I did get a little sidetracked by going and buying some sheep, but I do feel that was justified because we've already started making money from the sheep, and not only that, they are breeding. So we're getting slowly, we're increasing the number of sheep that we've got here on the farm, and we do need to have sheep in the series. We, we do have to have a pen of sheep. So I do feel that that was an acceptable slight detour, um, slight extra expense that we went and made with our money, and um, I don't, I don't regret it. It is something that I don't regret. I, I do feel that I made the right decision by going and getting those sheep. Now, let's chop that one there, and what have we got left over here, really? I mean, if I out over this way so we've got like the the hill moving up through there I'm just going to take down these two trees here that little clump of trees i'm going to leave them where they are i'll take down these two and i'm hoping that that will be all of the trees that we need i'm hoping that that will actually be it so I'll take that one down and i'll run over here and chop that one off there we go and now run back over here Strip these down, and then go back and do the same to the other one. After I've chopped this one in half, that is. There we go. We go to there, and just cut it in half. Because all I need to do is cut it in half. And this should be just enough. We need uh, 450,000. So, in order to get 450,000, ideally, we want... Um, well, actually, we need 448,000 for my target, because... I do still want to get the tracks. I mean, technically, we don't really need the tracks, but I still want to get them anyway because I think they look glorious. Um, so we're going to want $26,000 to be able to make four hundred dollars uh, $24,000 to make the 448 target. So $24,000, we are probably not going to be able to fit in on a single trailer load. So I'm just going to press B to start loading. And we'll start bringing it across here. But I am going to do my absolute bestest to put as many logs onto this trailer as I possibly can. And however many that might be. There we go. Just going to keep going and going and going. And I'm going to pile this one up as high as I possibly can. I would very, very much like to be able to get the full load on here. Then the next job that we're going to do, the very next thing that we're going to do, I was saying about buying a new tractor as pretty much the next thing we were going to do. But I'm actually thinking I'd like to get uh, the replacement trailer. I'd like to get the, the other trailer because I'm pretty sure that that one will allow us to put multiple stacks of logs onto one trailer. I'm pretty sure what we'll be able to do is to set it so that we can put um, a double... Like, if we start cutting the logs with the new Ponzi Scorpion in 6 meter lengths, we should be able to put two stacks of 6 meter logs onto the trailer with the new one. We can't do it with this one because it the, the adjustment doesn't work when you're using a dolly and a tractor. You can only do the adjustment when you've got a, um, a truck pulling it and you don't have a dolly underneath it. So we don't really want that. That's, that's not an ideal situation to be in. But if we can change it round so that we've got... Now, I'm going to go up here. So I'm going up and down the hill to do the loading. 
I figure that's probably the best way to do it, although that does mean that we're going to struggle to get this load on. Uh, there's, there is already quite a lot of timber on here. We're already looking pretty good with this. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that the other trailer, I haven't had a chance to test it yet, but I am hoping that that one will allow us to uh, adjust the loading position using the... Uh, we'll, 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 even though we got a tractor and a dolly and we don't have a, a truck pulling it, I'm hoping that we'll be able to adjust the loading position anyway. Um, there is another way that I'd like to do this, which is more realistic than what we've got right here. Um, and that is, I'd like to use a timber forwarder, like a, the, the, um, the Ponzi Buffalo or something like that, uh, to remove the logs from the logging area, take them to a loading zone, and then from there, load them up. And is it going to, have we stopped completely? We have. Because I'm trying to go over a tree stump, I think. Let me go round it ever so slightly. I'm sure it's because I'm trying to get over... Yeah, it's because I was trying to go over a tree stump. Right, now I'm going to go and... go. I'm going to go along the top. Because I, I am determined to have a full load on this trailer. I mean... It's a little bit um, sort of leaning over a little bit at the moment. We're, we're, we're having a little bit of trouble with it. Uh, but yeah, I thought it would be quite cool to have like a loading area for timber and then pull the logs out of. So instead of going around with the trailer like this, uh, we go with a forwarder and we load up the logs onto the forwarder. And then from there we move like take them to a loading area and that's what actually happens in big forestry zones isn't it There's, you know they, they they load them all up and then they move them from the main loading place to uh, they load them from there they load them onto lorries and and then take them away right i'm hoping that that is going to be enough because i don't think we're going to fit any more on there so we got that fully laden down. It doesn't look like it's even grabbed all of the top trees, uh, all the branches up there. But I'd say we got a fair heap. Um, and it's this one here. I did actually get it added this time. Ponzi Scorpion right there. Uh, we know that we've got the Buffalo Forwarder right there. But it's this one here. It's exactly the same, but this one's got auto load on it. So if we have six or seven, well, actually six meter logs, because that would go with the trailer that we're using. I mean, we could use the slightly bigger trailer. If we use the slightly bigger trailer, if we go to that one and we cut seven meter logs, we'll start with... Um, We'll start with doing what we got at the moment. We'll do 8 meter logs and we'll stick with this one that we've already got. But that one there is 15 meters long. So if we had two lots of logs at uh, 7 meters long, we could put two lots onto that one. This one here at 20 meters long, I think is a little bit too long. You could put three lots, uh, I think you could probably put three lots of 7 meter logs on there. And it'd stick out over the end a little bit. But uh, you'd, you'd be sort of... I think you might struggle to fit them all in. Six metre logs, definitely. You could easily fit three lots of six metre logs on there. And have space to spare. But um, I'm not going to worry about that now. Right now, we're going to... Look, look, right there. See? Uh, we have, we've got so many on here. So many logs on this load. That they're not even securing them properly. So I'm going to have to just come out of it here very slowly and carefully. We're quite top heavy as well. And I also need to get that tree loaded up. We got the, the short bit off the bottom. But I want to get that bit done as well. So bring you back to there and we'll skip off a second. So as many of you know, some of the trees on this map are a little bit weird. In that the bottom part of the tree actually exists. And you had about two meters of log off the bottom part of the tree. But then that bit there, you can see the visual, but there isn't actually any tree there. It's like the tree doesn't exist. I don't know how this has happened. I don't know what would have caused it to do that, but it is a thing. And I, I've, I've no idea why it's a thing. Absolutely no clue why that would be a thing, but it is a thing. So I'm just going to do a couple of those like that, and hopefully that will secure any timber that's... Uh, there is one, but I'm hoping it secured our tall tree. <laughs> okay, I've got to go out and have a look at this. There we go. 
There we go. It's growing right out of the um, <laughs> growing right out of the trailer. That is absolutely brilliant. There, right out of the trailer. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's get this one over to the sawmill. See if we can actually get all of this up there and sold. I'm hoping this is going to be the right amount. I'm really, really hoping this is going to be the right amount. I'm good. Yeah, we we, we, need, we do need to make sure we go slow. So, I've got ideas of ways I'd like to improve the logging. Now, to start with, with the logging, we will just stick with uh, 8 meter logs. We'll do 8 meter logs and we'll come along and load them onto this one and, and haul them up to the mill. That'll give us... You know, eight meters, I think it's between six and eight meters is um, all, you know, you get the right money for it. So it's all good. So then we can make a decision on what trailer we go for and how we go about moving them in the future. And I'm sort of think I'm, I am liking the idea. I'm definitely going to need a bigger tractor or a truck, but I'm really liking the idea of having the Ponzi Buffalo. And having that one, the, the auto load one, so that we're not there forever trying to load the logs up. Because that's just going to take too long. And so we will still use auto load. And we auto load onto the Ponzi Buffalo. And then we use that one and move. I got so much, I don't know that we're even going to be able to get up in here this time. I'm going to try and turn it over this way a little bit. Because it does seem to go a bit better if you turn in a corner as you move does seem to help but that is almost definitely our biggest load that we have ever taken anywhere all right we made it up the hill just and it's not quite fully it's, it's not quite like letting the load go i'm gonna bring that one to there and i'll take all the straps off a second i'm gonna run around to the back and oh there it is Right, actually, I think that's in the selling point. I was wondering about that tall one up there. Right, sell 21,000, and I've got all of that timber up there. So there's 21,200 and another 4,000. 25, almost 26,000. We have enough money. We're able to go shopping. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going shopping. This is fantastic. I'm going to take this one back to the farm. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to bring this one down to the entrance of the storm. Actually, no, because I, I want to get a little bit up the hill, don't I? Um, so I can just sort of head up the hill a little bit. And then we'll jump straight out of the tractor and start running across. So we'll, just move, we'll, we'll take this one up the hill a little bit. And then we'll jump out the tractor and we'll start physically walking across the hill there. Swim across the river. And we will go and get our new Ponzi Scorpion. And yeah, I'm still... So I, I do think that we'll probably get the, the next piece of land will be the bit up the top of the hill rather than this bit to our right hand side. I am thinking the bit to our right hand side would probably be useful. But at the same time... Yeah, we probably won't end up using it. I'm very curious how the Ponzi Scorpion, how the tree harvester is going to cope with one of those um, weird trees. The ones that don't exist properly that we just had. What's going to happen when we try to harvest one of those? Is it going to do something like really, really bizarre and weird or not? Quite sure about that, but I am looking forward to finding out. Okay, we're going to stop you right there and we're going to start running. Okay, um, so yeah, that bit up there, if we were to have like a staging area, we would use the Ponzi Buffalo, the forwarder, and we would carry the timber from wherever we're chopping down the logs, and we would run that up to this area up here. This would be like a perfect staging area up here, and so we could sort of start doing our cutting from this area here. And we would do either seven or six or seven meter logs, depending on what trailer we're using. But we could bring them up here with the Ponzi's Buffalo and unload them here. And then when we've got a substantial pile, then we go along with, there's our um, target over there. 
uh, when we have a substantial pile, because like working down through here, this would be perfect. You go and cut all these logs down. You'd have to make sure they didn't fall into the river, like roll off down the hill into the river. You'd really not want that to happen. But once you had enough logs there on the hillside, um, well, you, you'd use the, the buffalo to like get the logs out of there. Um, you'd then... Oh, I want to go up that way. Yeah, it, it wouldn't make any sense to go working on those steep banks using a either a lorry and a trailer or the tractor and trailer, whatever. It wouldn't make sense to go do that. Um, it would make much more sense to instead do it using the buffalo and bring it up to a staging area. And then we could either use the tractor to pull the trailer back through, or better yet, is if we could use a truck to do it. Um, although I'm not sure that a truck is going to be able to easily get up into the sawmill anyway. I think it's going to struggle to get up there. But that's that's a little bit further down the line because trucks are quite expensive. Um, looking here, the cheapest is that one, the Lizard Warrior at 120000 We've got some others. I got the Kenworth C500. I got a few different options in that one. Um, right there. We've got the Max over there, but they're... they're really expensive so like these here these start at 170,000 day cab hook lift but that's saying options plus 26,000 oh bumper extended that's still saying type 3 type 2 type 1 extended I haven't got any choice you, you've got to have the bumpers exhaust type 1's covered guards yeah they um a rack, a headache, a toolbox, a logger. All right. Right, but anyway, yeah, so we, we've got various different types of truck that we could go for. We could go for a big long one like this, or we could go for um, sleeper cab, triple axle, double axle, and so on. You, you get the idea. Um, but the, the Mac day cab, the Mac sleeper over here, the, these are quite big. But... Uh, not very powerful. Only 325 horsepower. That one goes up to 500 horsepower. That's as big as it gets. 500 horsepower is the biggest, and you got that. I mean, it, it looks pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. It does look pretty cool. But that's 330,000, and we don't really want that. So, um, we're not going to be spending that kind of money on anything right now. But let's, let's stop messing around. Let's, let's go in here, and this is what we're after. Ponzi, Scorpion King, right there. I would like those and then i'm going to have a look and we're going to see which ones that we want to go for now i prefer these but these are for very soft ground so we're not going to use the kovacs this time we're going to go through with the baltic ones i think would be pretty good um eco track right there magnum that like they seem like they would dig in more than the, the magnum ones um so I think we'll go with the Magnum ones, 448,000 buy. Yes, I am absolutely certain that I want to buy this one. We've only got a that. We've got $1,800 left. That's all we've got. Let's come out of there. Let's go and have a look. There it is in all its glorious glory. Right there is our brand new tree harvester. Doesn't that thing look fantastic? Right. Let's get this bad boy back home. We've got a little bit of a drive. So, I've got some controls on here with my joystick. I can do like that. But I don't have... Oh, I can twist it like that. On my joystick. And I can move it forward and back and I can move it sideways but to lift it up and down I've got actually I don't know what I've got because I don't use the keyboard and steering wheel and stuff for it so that I can use and then I've got mouse controls to do that but does it oh hang on hang on J J and K do that way so J and N and J, K and M, go back that way, so that's J, K, N, M, 
G is H and B is unlikely to be anything. So what about L? No. Okay, now I'm just confused. Right, I'm going to stick with just mouse controls for operating this one. And we'll worry about any other controls another time. The reason being is because I've got my joystick mapped to some of the controls on here and I've got a couple of the other controls mapped onto my steering wheel. It's extremely difficult to go oops, steady. It's extremely difficult to map um, extra controls to a single joystick and get it to work well, so I'm going to avoid doing that. And um, what I've actually got, there's two settings that you can use for um, crane arms in this game. You can have one setting where... Now, I can do some of this with the joystick, so I can just do that. One setting where it does that. I'm just literally pulling forward and back with the joystick. And it's actually moving everything forward and back. And it's keeping it at exactly the same level. So you can use that sort of setting. Or you can use a setting which is what uh, excavators normally have. Now, I used to use it with the excavator setting. But I've actually found this other setting to be a little bit easier to use. And so I'll see how I get on with it using just the mouse and keyboard. Whether I want to change back over to sort of the regular uh, excavator type settings. But we'll worry about that once we get back over to the farm. We should have just enough time today to get back over there and start this bad boy up and start doing a few trees we'll bring that one up like that and we'll change the length as we go along so we're going to start off doing eight meter lengths not going to do the six meter lengths until we've got something different with a trailer either we go and get a different trailer and we try it out like that or we will um yeah either a different trailer or we get a truck and we just put it onto the trailer that we've got. And we stick with the trailer that we've got and we put a truck to go with it. I'm sort of thinking another trailer would be good. And we're also going to want another tractor to go with that as well. So that we can pull the tractor and uh, the tractor can pull the trailer. And then the little Deutz that we've got, that one then can be sort of the, the main workhorse for the farm. Because the Deutz does fine on the farm. It does. we got no problems with that one when it's cutting the grass it's doing the tedding and stuff like that it works absolutely fine with that what we do struggle with is pulling the full loads of timber so if we've got a bigger more powerful tractor that would be better to go on to the trailer and then we can leave the tractor to concentrate on the smaller stuff so i'm sort of thinking that tractor would be our next purchase then after we've purchased tractor we then move to um the next sort of the next natural item which would be the new trailer so that we can put multiple stacks of timber onto the same trailer at least that's the theory behind it whether or not i haven't actually tested the trailer yet so i mean it might not work but i mean if it doesn't it doesn't we'll sort of we'll find a way to work around it i guess um one thing i was considering doing was purchasing a um front loader and we could get the Ponzi buffalo to auto load the logs out of the tree felling area and then take them from there to a loading zone and then we could always like auto unload there and then use a front loader and manually actually manually load the logs onto the trailer using a front loader or something like that um so that is a possibility but it's not one i'm wild about i got to admit i i don't really want to do too much in the way of um felling uh, uh, too much in the way of manually loading um those of you who do watch the time lapse series um you'll know that we are now on a map that has an awful lot of trees there are a huge number of trees on the new map and that means i'm going to be doing a lot of forestry on the new map yeah, I think we will stick with mouse controls for this. So we'll go there. Oh, I've already started up. Um, so we'll bring that one into there. I'm usually fairly good with mouse controls. We'll see. 
and see how I do with this particular setting because it's the setting and this is always the tricky bit is getting is just this first bit getting it lined up once you've got that bit then the rest is easy all right once you've actually got the tree secured by it the um, Ponzi scorpion the rest is very very simple you just do that you just press X on the keyboard just like that and there you've got a neat and tidy pile of logs and that's another thing that I genuinely genuinely love about this machine you don't leave the logs in long lines like we have been doing no 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 with this one we don't do that at all so I'll bring that one back into there um, yeah I'm wondering if I should set it to more what I'm used to with at least with using the mouse I think I can get used to this. I, I do think I can get used to this. And there we go. So, it might not... You know, I, I don't know how much time we're going to save doing this. Because, you know, we were getting used to using the chainsaw. So, I, I was doing alright with the chainsaw. However, um, it's definitely... Once you've got the thing secured, it's, it's definitely going to give you a better, um, a, a better cut. It's going to be uh, slightly faster once you've got the thing to... And yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if I should change this over. Because I can do it using the joystick and my control that I've got. Um, the settings that I've got set up for this. That works quite well. That I use for the time-lapse series. Use for the crane arms. That's worked well. You want When I've got the steering wheel there. But I don't have the steering wheel on this one. I deliberately don't use the steering wheel in this series so that I can sort of save my joints a little bit. Um, see an older episode for an explanation on all of that. Uh, but yeah, so maybe I should change this. Let's go down here. We've got a tight bundle of trees right here. This ought to, and, and also once you sort of get used to setting it up, you can like. You can drive this thing around pretty quickly and, and get it lined up as well. So bring that one out a bit. Like no, actually, I think I'm. I think I am going to do all right with this, as long as I remember which way to move the mouse. Because it's moving the mouse that's the biggest issue. There, drop that one down. And I really do want to find one of the weird trees. If we can find one of the weird trees with this, that would be absolutely brilliant. Because then we'd be able to sort of really test that one out. Uh, so we get three, three full-length ones, and then one that comes out at around six meters by the look of it. So, actually, if that's six meters on there, then that would be one, two, three, four, five, six-meter logs coming off of that one tree right there. That would work. Okay, I want to go to here. Uh, I just want to see. We are now ready to start the mowing. So I'm just going to finish up this episode by doing a few more cuts like this and yeah and lower you right down like that there we go swing you back round over to there and then chop another one down right yeah see some of these you end up with just like a little tiny short bit off the top and that's not quite too good but I mean it's, it's not the end of the world it's just not quite as brilliant yeah, and extend you out. No, actually, like I move the mouse up to move the, the whole thing forward, and it so it's it's reasonably intuitive actually. Once once you sort of get used to the fact that some of the controls, like I, I'm used to some controls on this and how they're supposed to work. So once I get used to the fact that those controls aren't actually doing the same thing anymore, um, figuring out the new controls that they do seem fairly natural in use and I, I am liking this it, do, it does seem to be a good thing and it that is something I hate that is something I really despise with this type of pine tree because I've seen that many many times before you chop a tiny little bit off the top and both sides disappear they completely vanish and that is definitely something that I have always despised it used to do the same in FS17 as well You'd lose bits of tree. You'd lose the entire top part of the tree because it would try to chop off the very tip of it. And I don't get that. 
just like one millimeter off the top of the tree and, and it removes the entire branch. Why does it do that? What is it about the very tip of the branch that, that it doesn't like? The, the game does not seem to like it. This is this something going on. I, it's not mods. It's definitely not a mod that does it because I've had it happen without any mods present at all. Uh, it definitely has happened in FS19 without any mods present at all because it started happening fairly early on and and did it a few times but anyway i have run out of time for today's episode so we'll do this one and i'll do that one more tree right in front of me and then we will call it quits so if you've enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and we will just grab hold of that one right i think i've actually got it have i yep there we go right Hopefully, it's not going to do the same again. Uh, let's lift that one up a little bit. There we go. Right. Chop you up. There we go. We have actually got the Ponzi Scorpion hard at work in the field. And right there. The entire thing has just vanished. It done it again. I do not get that. I mean, yeah, we're, we're losing thin logs. But still, it shouldn't be doing it. There's definitely something wrong there. Um, right, we're not going to sell any more timber yet. The first thing we'll do in our next episode is we will take this tractor and we will go and get the mowers. So I will start heading down that way. We'll leave the trailer right there and we will start heading down to go and get the mowers on. Uh, so until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later. <laughs>